the woman that cut it is like, oh, are you gonna do something for Halloween with this? I'm like, no, I just want skulls. Hi everyone, welcome back to Reissued. My name is Andrew. I have paint on my hands. Yeah, that's just a sign of what we do here. So apparently patchwork denim is trending. Um, I've noticed a couple of designers and DIY people making things surrounding this theme. Um, it seems like denim and patchwork denim and deconstructed denim is like one of those things that has been like consistently trending for like the last eight years at least. So, and it's never gonna go out of style. So like the term trend seems to like not encapsulate all that it is. Um, but this week we're gonna be making a jacket out of my infamous pile of denim that appeared in my very first video that I made with the denim chaps. Um, I have a bunch of jeans, every pair of jeans that I've ever worn, my family has ever worn, we can't get rid of anything. So I'm gonna go through the bin and see what we can make. Um, I've made some things like this before. I've made a couple of jackets actually, but I was always working from a pattern and it was a ladies pattern that um, I think initially I made the largest size and it fit me for a while and then I like grew and then it didn't fit me anymore. Um, so my sister has that jacket now. So um, I'm going to be drafting my own pattern today based on another jacket that I have and sort of draping that on my dress form, my mannequin guy as well. So a lot of the patchwork stuff that I've seen is either like deconstructed as in like, oh, it like took off a pocket and stuck it on somewhere else and it's kind of, or like cutting two jackets apart and putting them back together, that kind of look. Or it's more of like a real literal patchwork where there's like squares, which is not really my thing personally. I think that that feels a little like Little House on the Prairie or I don't know, it's just not my thing so much. So my take on this whole thing is gonna be more of like a motorcycle, biker kind of inspired situation. I'm drawing inspiration from one jacket in particular and sort of the style lines and the color blocking in that jacket. I'm gonna start with that as a point of inspiration and then just kind of let the denim do what it wants to do um, and see how that goes. So I think we should go ahead and jump on. All right, everybody, it is day one on this project. I'm at that place right now where I'm feeling kind of like overwhelmed because I don't know how this is gonna turn out and I don't really feel like I know what I'm doing and my allergies are not helping. Um, but we are gonna jump on it and get started here. I've pulled out some uh, cardboard pieces that I think might be good for tracing my patterns onto. This is why I never throw anything away. Um, and then I have right here on my form, the jacket that I'm going to be modeling this from. So I'm gonna take that off and see if I can start to get a kind of an idea of what my pattern will look like. I started by laying the jacket as flat as I could get it on the cardboard and tracing the general shape of the front panel. When I got to the shoulder, I pressed down along the seam and lifted up the fabric to mark underneath it. I then connected these marks to form the outline. I clarified my lines with a sharpie and made sure to add seam allowance where I needed it. I repeated this process for the back panel. The sleeve on the jacket I was tracing had an extra seam with a button closure, but I opted to simplify with only one seam. I folded the sleeve in half and traced on one side, then flipped it over to trace the other. So my patterns are cut. It's too soon to tell how well I did, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. Um, next, I'm gonna go through the giant pile of denim and sort out which colors I like and which waistbands and pieces that are already kind of intact I might be using. I decided that I was going to use these two waistbands for the collar and waistband of my jacket. So I seam ripped them off the jeans to keep them intact. So I've spent the better part of the afternoon seam ripping and pulling things apart and assessing what needs to happen and I think I have a plan. I opened up these jeans and laid them flat. 
to make the back yoke here. I'll cut this out along there and then use this chunk in here to come around to this front yoke piece. I have the waistband for the collar, waistband for the bottom of the jacket. I have these pieces that, that will be the, um, the front center seam with the zipper in it. Um, that will be the lower half of the front. Um, I'm also gonna use the legs of these jeans. Once I separate them, those will become the side panels here. And then I have these two larger panels that are gonna mostly become the sleeves. So it's all kind of in pieces now. I haven't actually started to cut anything, but once I do, I think it'll come together pretty quickly. I drew the chest style lines right on the patterns, referencing my inspiration image, then cut along these lines. I lined up the fold line of the pattern at the center, traced along my pattern in pencil, then cut it out. Then I folded that side onto the other side and traced and cut around it. That gave me my best chance at symmetry. I repeated this for the front panels. Then I cut out the lower front panel. This time the denim was too dark for my pencil to show up on, so I pressed the pattern down and cut around it as best I could. This was a bit of a struggle. <laughs> I did the same for the sleeves. I pieced together the back panel using the remainder of my dark jeans. For the side panels, I again drew the lines on my patterns using my reference photo, then cut along these lines and butted up the pieces against each other to create one piece. I placed the join line right along the existing seam in these jeans to create a built-in side seam. Okay, so I've done about as much as I can actually do without sewing. Um, I'm gonna unpin um, everything. I think I'm going to start by trying to sew all of the pieces on the front panel together and all the pieces on the back panel together. So at least if I have the panels solidly, I can get a better idea of how everything will start to go together. So let's do that. I first sewed the back center panels right sides together, then connected all of the back pieces. I left the raw edges exposed on this for a frayed detail. Plus it made it easier. <laughs> I did the same thing on the front. When connecting the side panels, I made sure to measure the placement to ensure symmetry. Once the front, back, and side panels were joined, I pinned and sewed the shoulders right sides together. At this point, I could cut out all the excess fabric from where the panels had overlapped. 
I tried the jacket on to mark the placement for the zipper, then pinned and sewed the zipper to one side, again right sides together. I made sure to switch to a zipper foot this time to be able to sew as close as possible to the zipper. I laid the jacket flat to help the zipper line up with the other side, then pinned and sewed it in. Alright, so the jacket is really starting to take shape here. Yay! Um, I think the next step is to cut the liner. Um, I found this really wonderful fabric at Joanne yesterday. It was in the Halloween section. <laughs> the woman that cut it is like, oh, are you going to do something for Halloween with this? I'm like, no, I just want skulls. Um, but I think we're going to um, cut that out. I wanted to wait to cut out the liner because I wasn't sure how long the jacket was going to be. and I didn't want to waste the extra fabric. Um, so now that we know, let's go do that. I laid my back panel pattern on the fold and cut around, being sure to mark the new shorter length. Then I cut the two front panels separately. If you're using a print like this, just be sure to check to make sure that your print is upright. I pinned and sewed the shoulder and side seams right sides together. Then I pinned and sewed the front opening of the liner to the inside of the zipper right sides together on both sides. I went ahead and basted the liner and outer shell together at the neck. However, I went back and understitched the liner since it was catching on the zipper. This would have been easier to do before I did the neck, but whatever. From these two waistbands, I needed to shorten one for the collar and lengthen one for my waistband. So I placed the button end of one along one side of the collar and marked the back center, then repeated this on the other side using the buttonhole side of the other waistband. I cut both and pinned and sewed them together at the back center, again right sides together. I sandwiched the outer shell and liner into the open side of the waistband and pinned it in place. Unfortunately, after trying many things to make this work, um, there's just too much fabric here in the front. I think when I took out the fabric at the bottom, it just made this like um, bulk out because I didn't take out anything in the top. Um, so I need to rip out this stretch, which means I have to rip it out three times because of the lining and the understitching, but I think that's just what needs to happen. But I'm just going to like let that live for now and move on to the lower waistband and then come back to the top. For the lower waistband, the, um, button needs to be on this side to match the top. However, um, this, the wrong part of this is open. So I am going to seam rip this top seam, cut the top open, and then that will give me the ability to sandwich the layers in there and uh, give it a finished edge. All right, coming in for a progress report here. I ended up taking out this seam twice and redoing it, but you can see it fits much more um, flat across the front now, which is better for the zipper and just better in general. So that was worth it. Um, that also meant that the collar could come in a little bit and fit as it should, which was great. I went and stitched all the way around with this. Um, I'm getting ready to cut off the bottom of the jacket. This is the waistband piece that I've modified. I cut open the part that was closed before, closed the part that was open. So now this can go right here along the bottom and create the waistband just like the collar. I cut off the excess fabric to shorten the jacket, marked and cut the longer parts of the waistband that I didn't use for the collar, attached them right sides together just like I did for the collar, then pinned and sewed the outer shell and liner inside the waistband. Almost there. For the sleeves, I cut two ovals for the elbow patches and pinned and sewed them onto the sleeves, placing them closer toward the back of the sleeve. Finally, I basted the liner and outer shell together along the armhole, sewed the sleeve closed, 
and then basted and sewed the sleeves into the armholes. And after three days and much drama, we made it.